Welcome back, Internet people. This is Desperate Housewives. And, oh, oh, something is happening. So, if you could keep me posted on how the case progresses, I'd be extremely grateful. See, Eric is a giant asshole. Just two people talking to each other, he just walks in between them and just stands there. Sure, I guess I can. But why are you so interested in this specific case? Come on. Do I really need a reason? I just like to stay informed. Of course not, Mr. Corsetti. Everybody knows you're a stand-up guy. All right, then. I'll be expecting to hear from you. And if you keep your promise, I just might be able to have a little talk with your chief. See if we can't bump you up from mall duty. That'd be great! I mean, not that there's anything wrong with mall duty, but... Hey, hey, I understand. You're cut out for better things than this. That's all. It's really funny that you say that, Vincent. Because I like people to get what they deserve, too. Vinny and the officer are talking. What should I do? I always will interrupt. Oh, hey. I didn't even see you. What are oh. you doing here? Oh, not much. Just a little eavesdropping. So you heard what we were talking about? I don't suppose I can convince you to join us. We were in the middle of a fascinating conversation that I think you'd like to hear. You don't mind, do you, Vincent? As much as I'd love to engage this lovely young woman in conversation... I really have to go. I have some pressing matters to attend to back at the office. The office. Right. Wow, that was strange. Why did he run off like that? Eh, whatever. I doubt those two would have anything interesting to say anyway. Come on, they seem like nice enough guys. A little skittish, though. Anyway, is there anything I can do for you? Why don't you run off like a good little mall cop? Mind your own business. Grab a free smoothie or something. Listen, I am not a mall cop. I'm a police officer that happens to be on patrol at the mall. There's a big difference. What do you say, mall cop? <laughs> Yay. Time to make dinner. The suspicious goal in my goal log that says, the only thing to do is mall make dinner, isn't going to result in anything weird happening in here, is there? Oh, just a phone call? Hi, honey. It's me. You'll have to be a little more specific than that. Are you bigger than a bread box? Are you my husband, my son, my dentist, or my lover? That's cute. Really. So, there's something I want to talk to you about. That's funny. I have absolutely nothing to say to you. Well, I wanted to give you the opportunity to explain yourself. What? Well, for starters... You've been acting awfully strange lately. Me? You've got some nerve. Whoa, whoa. Listen, this isn't about me. It's about you. You're looking at my personal files, checking up on my office staff. It's as if suddenly you don't trust me or something. Well, if you have nothing to hide, it shouldn't bother you, Cornell. And then it dawned on me. This wasn't a problem until you started spending time with that friend of yours. Oh god, are we talking about, like, everyone hanging out in the mall that one day? Or the mailman? Or Gabby's husband? That man's always sticking his nose in where it doesn't belong. Oh. Oh yeah, it was the mailman. On top of that, I don't trust him. He's up to something, and I think you know exactly who I'm talking about. It's no way to talk about yourself, dear. <gasps> hey, look at this. I like these bubbles. Who am I talking about? I don't like Vincent. I don't like Eric. And I don't like Cornell. But I do like yelling at Cornell. I wasn't... I wasn't talking about myself. Certainly sounded like you were. Do you really feel that way? I hate to say it, but yes. I... I didn't know. Listen, if it's really that much of a problem, I can try to finish up and come home a little early tonight. Come home from where? I was just at your office and you weren't fucking there. We can sit down and talk over a nice family dinner. How does that sound? That sounds good, but we'll just have to wait and see how things turn out, won't we? I should be home by 8.30. I'll see you soon. Bye. Goodbye. Alright, it's time to cook a meal. Because it told me to. It's gonna boil some water. Chop some mushrooms. Poorly. 
that flour to boil. You know what? Fuck it. This is gonna be a perfect dish. The water. There we go. Flour goes in bowl. Garlic goes in bowl. Oregano goes in bowl. Mix that shit. Stir the fucking water. Chicken. Rice. Oiled pan. Oh god, this these Master Chef things are hard. Butter. Breast. Mushrooms. Whew. God, I wish cooking was like this in real life. I would do it more often. Or ever. There we go. Look at this. Perfect dish. Who is here at the door? Hello? Won't stop knocking on the door. Hello? I'm coming. Hey, I'm home. Just in time for dinner, right? I guess, yeah. You've really outdone yourself with this meal, honey. If you're trying to soften me up for something, it's not working. Well, it's very good. And I wanted to let you know I appreciate it. I don't want you to think I take you for granted. So, uh, hey, uh, since you guys are busy actually getting along for once, I'm gonna head out with some friends for a bit. Don't let me interrupt the flow, though. Okay. See ya. Are you just gonna let him go like that? Why would I have a problem with it? He's a good kid. He knows not to stay out too late. Right? Listen, I was pretty sure it was Tabitha, but now I'm pretty sure it was him that put all those Daniel is Easy posters up. We should ground him. And then we should break his kneecaps. Right. Thanks, Dad. Catch you guys later. Cornell, what are you doing? The sooner he leaves, the sooner we can talk. I don't know how you got a hold of my safe, but I feel like you deserve an explanation. The woman in the photograph was a former patient of mine, and the journal was what I used to track her progress. She was also suffering memory loss, and that's why you found the documents on amnesia in there as well. Mm-hmm. We pieced all this together already. She died under my care, and I promise to never let myself forget that. It straight up just says that, uh, in the journals. Uh... Why didn't you tell me? I just assumed the worst about you up until now. And the sonogram was from when you were pregnant with our son. I couldn't bring myself to get rid of it. I guess I'm an old softy. Oh, right. I had entirely forgotten that I had a child. <laughs> you know me. I can be pretty emotionally over-controlled. So what? I'm sorry I freaked out when you went through my safe. Not that I don't have a right to be angry. Defensive is one word to describe it. Obnoxious is another. I still believe I was correct in trying to keep you away from Vincent and Eric, though. I don't trust either of those guys one bit. Did you know he had the nerve to come into my office the other day asking about you? If he did, I'm sure it was for a good reason. No, it was no coincidence. He was specifically asking about you. Oh, that's strange. That's such a weird thing for him to do. And as for Vincent Corsetti, don't even get me started. When Eric came into the office, he pretty much said the man has friends in low places. It is a high-ranking member of the mob. I couldn't believe it, but who am I to question an FIB agent? Tell me, is this the kind of person you want to be friends with? At any given moment, you could say the wrong thing to him and get yourself whacked. No one says whacked, dear. Um, you know, I have my suspicions about him, too. I hope that clears everything up for you. Not really, but it's better than nothing. Well, you should good... probably answer that. I'll clean up here. Oh, thanks. I wonder who it could be. I like how it just showed him walking up the door. Like, how odd. No, oh, it's doing it for me. I don't even get to click on the door or anything. Excellent. I'm glad you're home. I tried to get through to you earlier, but your phone was busy. Oh, you have great timing, Eric. I was just about to be bored to death by my husband. I'm sorry for coming over at a bad time, but what I have to tell you can't wait. Trust me, you're going to want to hear this. Oh, I'm so excited. Hey, I didn't know what you wanted me to do with the leftover. Oh, it's you. What do you want? I just stopped by to say hello to an old friend of mine. I assume you don't have a problem with that. I'm on to you, Mr. Larson. 
Are you trying to turn my own family against me? What are you talking about? Eric, couldn't you drop the cloak and dagger stuff and leave a message on my answering machine like a normal person? Hey, you don't have to tell me twice. I'll get in touch with you another time. Good night. Good night. <laughs> so tell me, what was he really doing here? I don't know. A few minutes ago, I opened myself up to you, and you're already keeping secrets from me. This is unbelievable. What's with you? In any relationship, conflict is inevitable. Whether it be the simple act of more than one person wanting the same thing, or more complicated needs among friends and neighbors. Conflict surrounds us all. But when it comes to the severity of consequences, the battles between a husband and a wife leave them all behind. Oh boy. Well, I guess that means that this is the end of this episode. Next time, there's more game? I really thought we were coming to a close there. It had all the hallmarks of being the end of the plot. Oh god, is Vincent Corsetti gonna whack someone else? Is Vincent Corsetti gonna whack Blanca Lewis? Who knows? Thanks for watching. Oh, did you hear that with the fucking music? Oh, I'm a fucking master. Uh, I ruined it.